One of the great things about Translator that no other program can do is that not only can you read off uh, proprietary devices like Akai and Sonic, Roland, Kurzweil, etc., you can also write to them. There's no other product on the market that does this, and it is extremely powerful that it can take old samplers, hardware samplers, and you can use modern new sounds on them very, very easily. All you have to do is just drag and drop things into these drives, burn them or write them, and then load them into your new, uh, your old hardware sampler, and you've got some great sounds. You have absolute full control. Well, just like the other videos, we use virtual drives for demonstration, and they're basically images on the disk, and we, uh, on the computer disk. And the reason we do that is so we can show you a number of formats at the same time, instead of taking things in, uh, putting things out, stuff like that. So to start off, to be able to, let's say you have an Akai and you want to uh, like burn a CD of new sounds and load them onto your Akai. So first thing you do is you create a, vir a virtual drive and you can do that by right clicking any of the virtual drive areas or you can use operations and create virtual drives there and, and make a new one. Um, the All virtual drives have to be either in the images folder or alias to the images folder. And I'm going to show you that right now. This opens the images folder and I'll show you the path. It's the boot drive, users, username, library, application support, chicken systems, translator six, images. But what I've done is I've made an image, uh, I've made an alias of, the, uh, of a folder and put it in the images folder. And this routes out to what I want to do here. And let's go up to Akai. Let's make it CD-ROM size, partition size. You always want that the maximum partition size, which is 60. And that's the format. So we're going to create it. And you can see it. I want to go into the right in the alias. I've got all these name folders. You don't need to do that. I just do that for organization. Uh, and I always call my tests Akai test only. So I'm going to start it. So it's making it. Sometimes if you can make some real large virtual drives, like for example the EMU, you can make a virtual drive up to 18 gigs. Um, and the, uh, uh, But for Akai, the limit is 512. So we finished that, and of course you can see it. And you see it's identifying all the partitions, and you can see they're all empty. Now it should be said that you know, should know what your proprietary drive Fi uh, format the way it works. Uh, you can find that out from your manual or even the translator manual tells you this. Okay, so now we've got the virtual drive and we want to convert something into it. So let's take uh, our video material folder and let's take our EXS files. There's a, a program called Dance Kit. Let's have fun and look to see what it's made up of. Whole bunch of things in there. So the way you convert these things, it's not like normally where you select it or double click it and hit the translate button like this and get the master translation dialog. Um, the way you do, way you convert into a proprietary format is you drag from the right and you drop on the left. And this answers three questions. What you want to convert, where, uh, what format you want to convert it in, it obviously knows Akai and where you want to put it. So you want to put this on partition A. So it's going to do that. Oops, I knew I was going to make this mistake. Uh, what I tried to do is try to take that big dance kit and put it in S1000 format. And it only has a 125 object limit to do that. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to cancel. And then I will go into Akai Preferences, and sure enough, it's translate to S1000 type. So I'm going to change it to S3000 type, which allows 509 objects in the volume. And then I'll be able to do it. And first thing also, I know that it made a folder. Now what I want to show you here is that you uh, can delete things on drives as well. So I'm going to right click on it, I'm going to go delete, and the volume is gone. So let's try this again. Let's uh, take the dance kit, drag it, and drop it on partition A, 
and goes and does it. Note it's really fast, as Translator always is. You've got to refresh to see the whole thing again. Sometimes you have to do that with Translator. There's the dance kit. There's the program. And oh, there we go. Works great. Okay, so, and you can just keep on doing that. And again, let's, if I delete this, guess what? It's completely gone. Okay, let's move on and let's do an Insonic virtual drive. And we'll go Insonic. I want to make this zip disk sized. And. Uh, in Sonic drives have labels, and this is what I'm going to label it: Garth 01 my name plus a number. I'm going to create it, and I want to put it into the Insonic folder. Again, that's not necessary, but we do that anyway. Just uh, uh, I do that just to be organized. And in Sonic, uh, can have the operating system on the drive. Um, it gives you an option. To do it I don't want it on there I just say no and it says it's completed and there's the folder now in sonic drives like I alluded to earlier um, uh, you got to know what the uh, uh, the way the file is structured and uh, in sonic files are just they have 38 files per directory and the root directory is the root directory um, you can also make directories again that's a great thing about translator I'm gonna call it my folder and sure enough, it's my folder. Um, translator shows the file number. The uh, in Sonics have a concept of file numbers, and then there's the name. It's always uppercase. Again, that's the limitation that these old things have. So let's go and convert something. Let's do an in Sonic. Or, I'm sorry, contact one this time. And we go to loops, and let's take this house organ loop. And like before, let's see what it's made up of. Convert the contact file. I'm just going to drop it on the root. And there it is. Look familiar. And you can see Translator does the loops and everything. One more thing I want to show before we go. Uh, we can. You can also rename things on your disk. Now. It doesn't allow you to do it right off. You have to change your preference. And it's a disallowed renaming. We have this checked by default so you don't accidentally rename something without, uh, by accident. So now it's just like you just select it. I'm going to call it new inst. And there it is. It's called new inst. As you can see, Translator is extremely powerful for taking modern sounds and making it available for your older, uh, older instruments. Let's do another one. Let's take bass loops. Refresh it. There we go. So you can see Translator is extremely powerful for making modern sounds available to your older instruments and as you can see you're completely capable of uh, renaming, uh, deleting, adding to all your proprietary drives and then taking it and loading it into your old uh, hardware sampler to add value to it.